As Americans, we are incredibly fortunate to have a diverse amount of wildlife and vast amount of public land right here on our home soil. It doesn't come without a cost, however. Every single trailhead, every piece of public land, and every wildlife population has a story. A story that started with someone wanting to protect it. The very word conservation was started by hunters in the late 1800s, and we continue to carry that torch today. So how does buying a hunting license, a fishing hook, or simply shooting a firearm help lead to more open public lands or more wildlife population? Let me explain further. The funding for the people, the professionals that work on the ground to collect the data, to put the data together, comes from hunters. Hunters' dollars, not state tax money at all. It comes from hunting licenses, elk tags, deer tags, those kind of things. That's the funding source for everything we do. Conservation and the elk recovery did not come easily. Scientists have had much to learn about the animal's biology, population dynamics, habitat needs, relations with predators, and the response to hunting. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, every year nearly 220 million is distributed from the federal taxes associated with hunting to support wildlife management programs. The purchase of lands for habitat conservation and hunter education and safety classes and another 760 million come from the Pittman-Robertson excise tax on guns and ammunition. As a result, in 2014, the United States Fish and Wildlife distributed a total of 1.1 billion in excise tax revenues paid by sportsmen and sportswomen to fund the fish and wildlife conservation and recreation projects across the nation. Those numbers are making a difference. Hunter conservation groups are also working on the front line to preserve wild lands. The total value of the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation's conservation work now exceeds $1 billion. And it doesn't stop there either. Hunter conservation organizations are doing their part to help ensure the future of open lands. In 2018, the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation announced that their organization alone has now opened up over one million acres for us to enjoy. Let me explain to you further how hunter conservation groups are actively working to help ensure wildlife populations are as healthy as possible. It's a massive conservation undertaking, and it doesn't come cheaply. Nowhere is it more evident how important hunting is to conservation efforts than at the yearly special tag auction for wild sheep in Reno. Within minutes, hundreds of thousands of dollars are raised to keep this species alive in some of America's most rugged and wild landscapes. I've, I've heard a lot of people say, I've been putting in for 50 years and not fair that that guy is able to put up a bunch of money and buy his way right to the front and go shoot these world-class sheep. And I do understand why people feel that way. The reality is, without it, our opportunities as, as residents would dwindle. The Wild Sheep Foundation's tags that we sell raise more than 70% of all wild sheep conservation dollars uh, in our country. In 2013, the Wild Sheep Foundation sold one auction tag in Montana for $480,000. Uh, we average on that tag just around $310,000. That money goes right back to Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. That is funding the conservation programs that we need to keep this iconic species on the mountain. 340 where? Let's go. $340,000. Sold, $335,000, thank you, $335,000. Again, Montana was the highest selling tag. It brought $335,000, and that's just for the opportunity to hunt. That's not a guarantee by any means. Sheep in our country, in the United States and Canada, if those tags didn't bring that money, then they don't have any value, then they're gone. 
I mean, it's a period. They, they, they won't be here. And I've donated a lot of money that I didn't get a sheep tag for. Everybody goes, oh, I just donated some money to buy a sheep tag. But I've donated a lot, hundreds of other thousands of dollars that have nothing to do with getting something back. It's putting sheep back in a mountain so all these kids can still hunt sheep. If you don't have sheep conservation, we don't have any sheep, period. And these are just a few initiatives or projects from a couple of hunter-based conservation organizations. There are many others like it out there who are helping other wildlife species and other habitats across the United States and the world. It's not about putting things back the way they were or even keeping things exactly the same because that goal is simply not attainable. It's about ensuring that ecosystems are as plentiful and diverse as possible. That will benefit mule deer and mankind. As Edmund Burke said, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Worst thing that can happen is for everyone to be apathetic and not really care. Once, once people stop caring about what happens to mule deer and what happens to the natural environment, then we're gonna lose everything. So what's the first step? Get involved. Not only can you make a difference, you'll probably have a far greater impact than you could ever realize. And if we care about it, we're gonna have to stay engaged and, and make sure we preserve what we have. Public lands belong to the people and not the government, but it takes everyone to be on the same page and work in the common goal. Do your part and get involved in conservation. It's more important now than ever to ensure this way of life for future generations. And I can promise it'll have a far greater impact than you might think. But I have to wonder, is it enough? Or do we need to make a collective mind shift and really understand it takes all of us to keep this legacy intact. We have too few people who care about wildlife and conservation. Those who do care about wildlife and conservation are terribly divided and we are simply running out of money because this, this, this issue is not given a high enough profile by governments globally. Now, what we have to do is to find a way to make sure that this idea, that this resource, that this responsibility for conservation falls to everyone. And to do that, we must seek a way to find relevance for this issue in the lives of every single person in society. It's a problem that we have to solve, and it's a problem that we have to solve together. I have my own reasons for wanting these animals' continued existence. And yes, some of those are admittedly selfish. I want to know where my food comes from, and I want to have respect for the animals that provides that to me. I want to continue a way of life that puts me in nature, with a direct connection to the wild animals that roamed these mountains for thousands of years before humans arrived. Just like my father was there for me on my first sheep hunt, I want to be there for my kids when their time to seek out this majestic animal arrives. But beyond my personal connection to these animals, I know that what really matters is to continue their existence in the world. They are a critical part of our Western legacy. As a part of our public trust, they genuinely belong to all of us. So it's up to all of us to preserve them.